So we've looked here and we've seen two scriptures and there are many more. But for, for time's sake, two scriptures that speak about sinners as those who are lost, those who, are, who do not have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. But did I not tell you, it also means believers who willfully commit sin. I know there are people who are ripping hair out right now. I don't, this is, the intent is not to upset. It's to open dialogue. It's for us to get back into our Bibles and say, did God say? Not in the sense of, uh, is God lying to us? More in the sense of, did we miss something? Are we lacking in some knowledge? Amen? So with that said, turn to Galatians chapter 2. We're in Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and then Galatians. Hallelujah. And in Galatians chapter 2, find verse 17. Verse 17. Now, once again, one of the ways that the Bible refers to individuals as sinners is talking about believers. And some believers don't believe that they can be referred to as sinners, which kind of goes against what the Apostle Paul, because he refers to him as, and I know we kind of paraphrase this, the chief of sinners. And when he calls himself that, it's written in the present tense. In other words, born again, spirit-filled Paul, the Apostle Paul, refers to himself as a chief among sinners. Present tense when he wrote it. Not, I was a sinner and now I'm saved. But I am saved. I am a sinner. That's what Paul said. And we'll understand it more when we look at context. Amen. 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 Why are you going here, Paul? It's all connected. I, I don't want us to mix up the difference between fellowship and relationship. How many of you, that's good, Lord. How many of you, husbands and wives, mothers and children, brothers and sisters, are out of fellowship with somebody that you're in relationship with right now. You're not talking, you're mad at each other, you, you don't want anything to do with it. See, you never lost your relationship, but you did lose your fellowship. Amen, amen. And I don't want us to mix that up and that's exactly what we do. We mistake relationship for fellowship. There's, there's much more to, to, to relationship than just existing. There's an intimacy, an exchange of love, an exchange of grace, an exchange of mercy, a, a causing of joy when you're in a right relationship that results in positive fellowship. Can I get an amen, somebody? Hallelujah. We're in Galatians chapter 2. Find verse 17, please. You ready for this? Now, this is this is it's deep. We're digging a little deeper. And I don't dig deep for people to look at me and go, oh, whoa, that's deep. I just don't want to be shallow. I want our roots to be deeply embedded in God's word. So when the winds of, of, of adversity come, when the earthquakes, the spiritual earthquakes come that will rock this planet, we will be so deep in his word that even though we may shake, we will not fall. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 17, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we who? This, this book, Galatians, is written to the church at Galatia. It's written to specific Christians, but it's applicable for the whole body of Christ. While we Christians seek to be justified by Christ, we Christians ourselves also are found sinners... Is therefore Christ the minister of sin, God forbid? I'm going to read that again because there, there are some blinking eyes right now that like, hold on, hold on, I, I never saw that. But if, someone say if, but if we Christians seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin, God forbid? That's the exact same Greek word that we saw in the other two scriptures in Romans for sinners. And here it's talking about born again believers with a caveat, God forbid. In other words, we shouldn't be acting like that. But it says, 
But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Now, something that my, my, my darling wife spoke about in her pastoral remarks reminds me of this next verse here, 18, which I really didn't put in the notes, but, I, but it goes together. For if I, Christian, build again the things which I, Christian, destroyed, then I, Christian, make myself a transgressor. I make myself a sinner. Now, remember I said context is king? Context will always give you the little minutia that makes you go, oh, Eureka, I got it. In this context, the specific sin that's being dealt with in the church, in the body of Christ, is racism. Racism. 